Welcome back to the Ibo Kwenu podcast. I know it's been a minute since the last, ep- the last episode, but I had to give everyone time to catch up. You know why? Because it's summer holidays, and with it being summer holidays, you need to catch up sometimes. So, the thing is, um, before we get into today's guest and t- today's subject, if you are living in London and you are living in Manchester, I highly, highly, triple highly recommend that you become a member of CSN. There's many, 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 many great benefits. There's loads of events that go on, um, loads of, of topics that are discussed at GHMs. So the link to that is going to be in the description box below. Um, but yeah, even, even recently there was the dance masterclass. So you never know, there might be another one. There might be another one. And I might be there. But anyway, uh, so we've got today's guest. Uh, by, by the way, um, uh, today's guest, his name is, you know what? I, I hate butchering names, so we're gonna let the guest introduce himself first. Uh, my name is Ike Naonomechi. Yeah, and uh, I live in Bristol. Perfect, perfect. So, we'll, um, in fact, one thing I would like to ask our guest is, what does your name mean, and do you yeah. live up to that name? Yeah, Ike Na means father's strength, like perfect. the strength of my father. Yeah, I would say I live by the name because I prefer my travel name Ike Na to my uh, other names yeah, yeah that's cool. i'm glad you even said that so because you know what's int- like i remember like growing up um in primary school like it, yeah, yeah the primary age i remember i did prefer like my Igbo name but obviously that's the short version but like oh. iffy but then the funny thing is i just remember as i got older for some reason i don't know what the i'm still trying to figure out what the real reason was but mm-hmm. like I ended up gravitating towards just using my English name. I guess wow. maybe it was a subconscious thing, thinking people will pronounce it and respect me more. I I, I don't know. But, um, yeah, so before we get into today's like subject, in a, in a sense, uh, let's get into the color nut game. So okay. uh, this, is, this is one of my favorite games, yeah? Okay. <laughs> so it's just a, a few... A, it's just um to break the ice. So, right, here we go. We've got... See, now this is why I don't like butchering, but so you got a bacha or a corby? A bacha or a corby? <laughs> yeah. I, I'll, I'll definitely go for a corby. Yeah. Um, okay, so high life music or Igbo traditional folk songs? I do a mix of both of them. So I do a mix of both of them because anything Igbo high life, anything Igbo music, I love it. Perfect, perfect. In fact, even though it's... Okay, maybe we'll break... In fact, let's talk about it real quickly. So okay, I I found out... I was watching something the other day. Yeah. In fact, to be fair, I saw two clips. But okay. one of the clips... um, One of the clips, the guy was... Well, he was saying more or less that He's he, he is up from Igbo heritage. He's got okay. Igbo bloodline. Okay. But the thing is, he also mentioned that okay, yeah, I know high life is different from Afrobeats, but he was saying that Afrobeats don't talk about social issues. So from your from it when we're talking about, for example, high life music or Igbo traditional folk songs, yeah. What songs or what artists would you say? Talks more about social issues. Uh, okay, from the high life perspective. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like let's say let's take uh uh Chief Fosita uh as an example. If you yeah. listen in depth, you discover that most of his lyrics have particular storylines about living together, how to go about businesses, how to interact with people how to look inwards and uh, those stories definitely it's one that when listening to it and you understand the language better you can relate to what he's saying so the message has been passed across through high life music so that's just one out of many examples but uh, yeah especially if you're looking back some heaven gives you an, an idea of the history what happened even way before you were born so music also gives us that clue, uh, the war, how the community survived, the strategies they used, how they lived togetherness, and to ensure that everyone 
those that probably survived the war, how they survived. And even the survival skills were put in, uh, in, in music form. So high life, when you listen to so many musicians, you will get this from them, definitely. Great, I'm glad you mentioned that. Thanks for that. Um, so, see, all right. Wearing traditional Igbo attire or Ankara? Whoa, traditional Igbo attire, 100%, any day, any time. Ah, Isiago, no, 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 no. <laughs> Isiago is always number one. Is always number one with, the, with the red cap it gives you that you know when they say okay quarter that kind of vibes it gives you that able vibe you know you see an able man from afar you definitely know he's an able man the aura uh, is there the, the the confidence is there the movement yeah. is there and isiago and the cap gives you that top notch like physical appearance no one needs to you don't even need to explain to anybody once they see you in the in the attire so Hundred yeah. percent, any day, any time. It's Yago, Iwo attire over any other traditional attire. <laughs> I'm glad you said that was so much confidence. Yeah. But yeah, uh, all right. So, masquerade festival or New Year festival? Masquerade New Year festival. You know, uh, different masquerade have different days. They tend to come out to perform, and New Year festival is just once in a year. So I, yeah, I, 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 I can't I can choose one over the other, but if it gone to my I head, I need to pick one, I, I, I'll go for the, the masquerade. I'll go for the masquerade because the variety is always there, different masquerade, different dance steps, different days for them to be celebrated. Yeah, I'll go Perfect. with the masquerade, yeah. All right, so this is the last one for now. Um, okay. Listening to Igbo Proverbs or Storytelling by Elders? Oh, listening to Ibo Proverbs or storytelling by elders, I would say I prefer the Ibo Proverb because I remember one time I attended a Munda meeting and uh, loads of Ibo Proverbs I heard that day and it made me feel as if, well, what are they even speaking? Well, listening to it, you it gives you that feeling that you need to think about the meaning yeah. and the context it was used the discussion at that very point in time will give you a better understanding of the of the proverb and uh, i think they call it ilu imu ima ilu something like that so uh, i'll always go with the ibo proverb ibo proverb perfect no worries yeah, yeah. um so yeah that's like i said that's that's round one for now uh, <laughs> and i hope that's people good. listening at, like, at home or, where, or wherever they're listening i hope you lot are joining in especially if you're watching on on youtube you can leave your your answers in the comment section below so um so what i want to say so for now um so yeah let's get more into your like your your backstory and everything um so okay. so you really explained your, your, your name and your me and the meaning behind it so yeah. let's talk about um you know your, your early life of growing growing up where did you you grow up and yeah, let's start there. Like, where did you where did you grow up? Yeah, I I grew up in Nigeria. I was born in Benin City, to be precise. Oh, no. Nice. And uh, uh, it was actually an Igbo community in Benin City. So I grew up in uh, there. That was how I learned how to speak Igbo. Nice, nice, yeah, nice. So, so our, our parents do communicate with us in Igbo, and uh, from there I went to the uni. Delta States. So from Delta States, I served in Kirby States, Nigeria. So after serving up north, I started working. I worked in all your states, from all your states to Lagos, from Lagos to Kogi, from Kogi yeah. to uh back to Benin, then from Benin to Asaba. Because I worked as a salesman, and when it comes to sales profession, you oh, have to yeah. travel. Yeah. So after six years of successful sales career, I decided to pursue my my biotech dream. So I left Nigeria for the UK two years right. ago. And, and uh, I studied at the University of Salford, MSc Biotechnology. And uh, a year later, I graduated with distinction and um, worked in my school briefly to gain the required experience in the UK. From yeah. there, I moved to Cambridge worked for a biotech company 
that manufactures synthetic DNA for gene and the vaccine therapy. And currently I'm with the NHS working as a genetic technologist. So it's been a beautiful ride. Yeah. I would say overall, but there have been challenges, there have been barriers. Well, you know, those challenges and barriers always test your commitment to pursuing your goals. So it te they, they test your preparedness. They test how hungry you are for the big picture. I'm glad you actually mentioned that, actually, because yeah. even with myself personally, it's like, I've, I'm, well, I say, yeah, I've gone through some challenges as well. And it is true in a sense, it does test your commitment yeah. for, towards your actual genuine goal. So I'm glad you actually mentioned that. And also yeah. the fact that you mentioned about, um, about Delta State and also being in, it's like, the funny thing is, um, <laughs> I met my mom's side of the family is Delta Ibo, and then my oh. dad's side of the family is from 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 Benin. So it's like, oh, it's that, like that's yeah. good. <laughs> that's yeah. awesome. You know, you know, Benin's uh, the Deltans were known for uh, speaking pidgin. Yeah, so we, we speak pidgin a lot. So you know, how you did, how things now, what's in the sub for your end, those kind of stuff. It's fun. See, now I should I should be. I should know how to learn to speak pigeon, but me crying up listening to UK. I'm more like, if anything, I'm more yeah. like anyone could tell that I'm literally from South London. They could just tell right off from just one word. They're just not mm. from South London. I'm like, how do you know? <laughs> but yeah. Um, so also I was gonna ask the me. So yeah, in terms of um in terms of like because I remember you mentioned about doing sales. So yeah, in, in regards to that, how did um, how did you get started? Because I know with sales from from also from my experience as well. Yeah. Like I remember doing sales at first, and okay. the funny thing is not funny, but like I I clearly remember like I remember we had to go the sales that we did. We had to sell like um energy, so okay. um I remember we had to go door to door. And I remember we had like a, there was, we were put into like groups, but then we okay. also had a thing where we had, when we did do door to door, I remember they did put us in like two groups. So wow. we had to go with someone that obviously knows okay. better. And once you feel like you mastered it, yeah. then you get to the sense of, okay, now it's your turn. You can make those sales. But the issue, the issue for me was, yeah. Even though I did it for like literally, when I say it was literally seven months, it was literally seven months. I started on the 7th of January 2007 mm -hmm. and I ended on the 7th of July 2007. <laughs> like, <laughs> you remember that yesterday. Well, why did it end? You you just couldn't keep up or what? No, I couldn't really keep up because it was just commission uh -oh. only. So that's oh. what I'm going to ask you. In so was it commission only that you was doing or did you? was it like a, a salary-based income plus commission? It was salary based, salary based, because awesome. I I worked for pharmaceutical company for a pharmaceutical company in Nigeria. And then, so with that said, yeah, um, with the incentives, like how? Yeah, how, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, they were they were based on your performance. You know, once you're hitting your target, you're meeting a lot of things. Definitely, the incentives comes with it. And uh, that's, that gives you more motivation, I would say. Well, oh, believe nice. me, before you start hitting those targets, the early stage is actually very yeah. difficult. Yeah. Very difficult. I, I remember prior to that, I've never had this professional sales experience. All I had then before I started the role was working for my uncle because he, he owned a shop in Benin. You know, Igbo boys now we always look for an opportunity to, to go know yeah. how business happens in the street and all of that. So yeah. with that in mind, I knew sales isn't, wasn't going to be easy, starting off from the professional perspective. Yeah. So um, I was able to recognize the gaps initial stage, you know, for negotiation skills, not knowing how to align your product or position your product for those customers. And that where the personal um, uh, ability comes in how you try to go learn things, read about, read books, attend online courses and all of that, listen to senior colleagues who could guide you. And that is exactly what I did. 
and uh, I was able to pick my button and had a very smooth sales career from the second year till the sixth year. So once you get to that pedestal, you understand that, hey, you've paid the price, you know, you, yeah. you, you put in so much work in the beginning. And then I remember telling my junior colleagues then that, see, it's going to be easy. It's going to be difficult in the early phase because it is normal. You, you, you're just in a very big ocean. You're trying to learn how to move your body accordingly so you can swim and survive. So yeah. having someone to guide you is very important not just in sales but in all aspects of life so i had the guidance and i was able to give same guidance to my That's junior cool. colleagues and uh above all that was how i keep saying i had a very successful sales career That's I, good. That's I, good. I, 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 I'll say that yeah that's good so uh then speaking of that then as well okay. what, what would you say is some of your fond memories you have from your childhood yeah, the four memories from my childhood, uh, it has to be going home every December to celebrate Christmas and New Year. Yeah. You know, knowing fully well the family is going to be uh, around, extended families are going to be around, your long-term cousins, faraway cousins, you guys have been communicating and you haven't seen yourselves for for, for months. So the December trip is always something I I look forward to then. And there, there's one beautiful thing that happens. Once we are approaching our, our, our hometown, there is this Catholic church we normally see. It has a very big bell, you know, those mass bells. Once we see the, the pillar from far away, the excitement kicks in. That means we are we, we are almost home. So I'll say that that's one beautiful childhood experience, uh, memory. I'll say I will never forget. I will never yeah. forget. You know, crossing the additionally crossing the the, the River Niger Bridge, you yeah. know you you are, you are home. You know the bridge gives you this uh, calmness, home, home, home sweet home. You know, so childhood memories are, are they are always in my mind all the time. That's good. That's good. Yeah. And now now fast forward to to um. In fact, no, it's in fact, because obviously the, the subject is, itself, well, one of the subjects I say is to do with, you know, the bad governance in Nigeria. So yeah. from your perspective, from a child to okay. your perspective of the adult now, what would you say is the difference or is there any difference? Oh, there, there is a huge difference. My childhood and now I would say Nigeria has retrogressed badly wow. you know you know things economically yeah which was though as a child i didn't really understand the economy about any nation or stuff like that but yeah. based on the currency value now you discovered at the end, that time you with, with 10 naira, 20 naira, you can get something significant but for now it's, it's a far cry from it so currency value is so poor unemployment rate is so high our uh, infrastructures are so dilapidated even like after 20 years they're still thinking about road they're still thinking about electricity oh. even basic amenities are not even been provided and even if you those that have access to it freely probably the top uh, 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 people and stuff like that but the common man the middle class has been eroded and it, it, it is it, it is an eye so you know th talking about nigeria the bad governance it affects everybody even if you're not in nigeria anymore or you have yeah. friends you have families who are there so the ripple effect will always uh you always feel the ripple effect so that's true it, 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 it is it is a topic that you know it's very sensitive yeah very and, and and if you don't use the right word people are gonna say oh you're speaking from the point of privilege you're not there anymore or oh, we have family i have family back home they always yeah. feel the impact of poor policies made by the government and if they feel it definitely i'm family oriented and i feel i feel uh i have such feelings too so it it affects them directly and affects me indirectly yeah. So even looking at healthcare sector in Nigeria, I was speaking with a friend a few days back, 
is there any particular sector in Nigeria that you say is productive at this point in time? The election was the moment where Nigeria could have taken a new turn. A new wave would have stepped in, but we all know what happened. Yeah. We, know, we all know how everything was so glaring. We know how the mandate was uh, taken. We know how how everything played out and all of that. And uh, it looks yeah. like for people like us who did our best to talk to people, you have these candidates right in front of you. You have to use your conscience. Let's put yeah. political parties aside. Let's, let's put our uh, selfish reasons aside. Nigeria was bleeding before the election. It's still bleeding now. And there's someone who has given everything, who has laid down plans, who could communicate, who could build trust between the people and government. Yeah. And he, he put in the effort and his mandate was stolen. And now the country is in shambles. So protests, post protests here and there, government infiltrating protests, counter protests, and all of that. And it's quite disheartening. Yeah. But at the end of it, or oh, we are not gonna give up. Yeah. We're not gonna give up. We will keep contributing in any definitely best possible. Progress will happen, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. progress will definitely happen. Like, that's why I, I like trying to have a conversation like this, because it just it 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 puts my main my from a personal perspective it puts my main frame of thinking okay what can i do to help but then people also other people listening or watching they yeah. may have an idea i remember there's this, there's this quote from um from tupac he said i may not be the was it something something to do with something like i may not mm -hmm. be the person to change something but i'll be i'll be the person to spark the idea in a person or something like that so oh. that's what i'm trying to get out with, with this as well because i feel like sometimes with life is yeah. obviously i was born in the uk so i can obviously see it from a different perspective but i think of it's so it's heartbreaking when you see things like this it's heartbreaking it is but, um, it is. but uh speaking of that as well though so um yeah. so from you um moving from nigeria to the uk like what was the actual the actual turning point like yeah what was the turning point what made you that decide to leave nigeria yeah uh before 2020 i never had the plans of leaving nigeria while in the university i had friends who wanted to leave i'd be like oh, why are you leaving just stay back or well, after 2020 2021 I think my perspective changed. I needed to leave, you know, because I was actually working in the Southeast and that was where the seat at home stuff started before the election, insecurity in the Southeast and, 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 and all of that. Each time I told my mom I wanted to travel probably to see clients in the region and she, she, she gets this kind of a like a panic attack and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. Why are you going? Even if you want to go, don't drive down and stuff. And then because she's heard so many news, we've heard so many news insecurity. And I thought it wise. Okay, I think it was high time I left since I had the resources to leave. And uh, that was actually one of the reasons, not even the major reason. The major reason I left was to chase my 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 biotech career because I felt my time. Uh, yeah. my commitment to sales profession it was coming to an end and i needed something deep down that i've always wanted to do it still goes back to poor government and all of that and being uh i had my first degree a bsc uh, medical biochemistry so for us there you know i needed an, an environment where i could practice what i've the knowledge i've gained and uh, I felt yeah. U UK was the best destination for me. So many biotech companies here, and I came yeah. here for my masters. And I'm glad I made that choice. You know, good, 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 good. Uh, so with that said as well, then. So, what would you like when you first arrived to the UK? Like, mm -hmm. what was your initial 
like thoughts because I'm I'm pre- I'm sure there would have been like a, a culture shock because even me when I even think about it because um even me yeah even though I live in the UK it's like even if I were to go somewhere up north to me it's still a culture shock it's like it's like because I know in in London specifically it's so predominantly like it's there's so much people around it's like it's very um I, I don't explain it but it's like I know versus somewhere more up north it's in fact the funny thing is it's like even though in london you yeah. get a lot of a lot of people you would think there'll be more i'm not saying people aren't friendly because they are to a degree but it's like i know up north if you just want to wake up one day just go for a walk you can say hi to someone and they say hi back with no no problem whatsoever sometimes yeah. in london it's like you say hi to someone but they look at you like do i know you but <laughs> So, yeah, what's 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 been your what's been your experience so far? In fact, if, 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 if we say your experience first so far, let's, let's, what's, what was your first initial reaction? First reaction. Uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to think about any particular culture shock. Uh, the one I can remember is you telling someone sorry as a way of being empathetic. Or back home, when when you see someone hurting and you say sorry, they understand you're being empathetic with them. But here, once you say sorry, they'll say for what? Like you didn't cause it. You are not responsible for what's happening to me. So yeah. I had I had to tune down on how I say sorry. <laughs> so yeah. I, uh, that, that 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 was one. Then which though, <laughs> I will share this very funny experience with you. I, when I when I moved into the UK, you know, going to get stuff from Tesco or from many of the malls, they ask you, oh, do you need a bag? Yeah, definitely, I need a bag. I never knew you had to pay for those bags. <laughs> it was tiny stuff that I could just carry with my hands. Oh, do you need a bag? Yeah. And I never knew I was paying for, for the bag because it, in Nigeria, you go buy anything as as little as it could be. They'll give you a bag alongside for you to put in, put it inside. Well, here one day, I a friend told me that I hope I know I pay for those bags because I I never checked my receipt. I received dead. Yeah. So you know, like, so I've been paying for this bag, and I had loads of bag at home and, and all of that. So might not really fall into culture shock, but to something I was like, no, 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 <laughs> going to. Oh, yeah, that, that, that was it. That was it. So, no, it's, it's, it's interesting to even say that because because I remember they I remember like like I said, me growing up here in London mm-hmm. before they they never used to sell bags. They never used to do it, and I don't know why they don't they don't do it. They try to say it's because it's for environmental reasons, but let's be real, it's all about making profit. Because I remember one time that it was five p, and then within the next two years it's twenty p. It's Whoa. Like, it keeps going up. This keeps going up for no reason. But it's like the fact that you mentioned that you got bags at home as well. <laughs> I, it's funny. Before I had bags at home, regardless anyway. But that was only because my when like growing up, I also grew up in foster care. So I remember my foster mom used to have like bags. Just she had like a cupboard full of bags. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, just, so just... instinctively, I've just kept that there in general anyway. Just. Just because she had used to, but yeah, so it's 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 good to even do that these days. Just have, make sure you have your bag because paying for a bag is just great. Yeah. But the thing is, yeah, even the, it is interesting when it asks you, "Do you need a bag?" I mean, you actually do need a bag. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, so um, let's get into the the second round of the cola not game. Um, okay. all right, so. Remember, people, if you're listening and watching, make sure in the comment section you also type down what your answer is as well. All right, so, all right, so the traditional bell music or the slit drum music? Traditional drum music or what? Yeah, traditional bell music. So, all right, see, this is why I don't like butchering, yeah? Park, okay, very, okay, good, so, good. Again, and or Ikwe, I believe that's how you pronounce it. Ogene or Ikwe. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would say I, I prefer Ogene. Yeah. I prefer cool, cool. Ogene. That, that, that's why I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of 
a Jai Kiwamba. Uh, yeah, you know that guy that that, that uses yeah. Guinea. And yeah, I prefer Guinea. Yeah. All right, so um all right, so Okwa or Oha soup? Or uh, wait, is it did I pronounce that right? <laughs> yeah, Ukwa uh -huh. or Ukwa or or Oha soup. Oh no, I I'll always go. I'll I'll prefer I prefer Okwa. I don't uh, like I don't like Oha soup. And my friends, they say I'm I'm, I'm a fake Anambra man who doesn't like <laughs> Oha soup. <laughs> In fact, I'm glad you mentioned that you're, you're like you know what's funny you a number of people are everywhere. Like I just cross up. You know what it is? Why are you not everywhere? <laughs> no, I think I, th I think it's not really about a number of people. I think Ibo Ibos are everywhere. <laughs> that's true. That's, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Ibos are, are everywhere. So we, we travel a lot. Yeah. And, you know, since business travels, so Ibos travel with business and all of that. Even outside business, education and different aspects of life. So you always find Ibos there, and we we keep traveling. We keep traveling. Yeah. You know, there's one funny thing about there's one funny thing about Ukwa. You know, when yeah. you go, when you attend occasions, and they say, you know, Ukwa is strictly reserved for top dignitaries. You know, yeah. it's not every it's not everyone that they serve Ukwa. So there's this funny saying that when you go to an occasion and they serve you Ukwa, just know that your level he, 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 he has improved. You know, stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> Like but oh, 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 soup. I'm not really a fan of oh, soup. Uh, the no, people I that would say, the people that would say, ah, is this guy really an Anambra guy? Because <laughs> <laughs> All right, speaking of traveling as well, yeah. So visiting Enugu or Emo State. Visiting Enugu or Emo State. Um. I'll prefer Enugu. I'll prefer Enugu oh, yeah. because I've I've only visited Imo State once. That was in 2013. Yeah. And uh, Enugu, I've visited Enugu several times. You know, when it comes to social hub in the yeah. southeast, I think we just have to give it to Enugu. Social hub in the southeast. So found I think I give it to to Enugu, and they have very good uh tourist places you could visit the would the oh, hill oh. the coal something coal related the nikkei lake and stuff like that so i know emo state have their own well i'm not too conversant with emo state but i'll say i always visit in enugu i prefer enugu yeah all right speaking of enugu so enugu rangers or Inyimba fc Whew. this is a tough one <laughs> this is a... <laughs> I, I I'll say I'll go with uh Aimba. Perfect. I'll go with Aimba. Aimba Aimba did, did. I'll go with them. But for, not not so big significance, like if I'm to give them any points or stuff like that. Well just yeah. because of my sentiment, I'll go with Aimba. Aimba or Faba, you know. Yeah. And Yimba FC or Martin, that's all <laughs> together for victory. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> uh um so, all right. So, uh, learning able dance styles or contemporary dance forms. See anything Igbo. It's I'll prefer anything Igbo to yeah non Igbo stuff. Yeah, the, you know Igbo dance steps. You know, as a guy, they say during your trad, those moves you make, the the dance steps. Oh, it's a thing. It's a thing of pride to me. Yeah, it's a thing of pride. You know, the 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 the, the aura, confidence. You dancing, putting on your isiago, making those warrior moves, warrior dance steps and stuff. Ah, uh, that's the vibe. I can't miss it for any contemporary dance and stuff like that. Yeah. So he he will dance all the way. He will dance all the way. So I'm guessing I know your answer for the next one then. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Able traditional wedding or, or, or modernized modernized wed, wed, what can I speak? Modernized ceremony. Um you already know Ibo over every other yeah. thing. 
you know the the, the, the traditional wedding you, you attend traditional weddings uh the, the wine carrying the bride dancing she and her friends dancing the 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 the, the bride the groom and his men all doing their, their things the dance and all of that it gives this wonderful cultural beauty i, I, I would say uh, i would say then going okay compared to the other one it's more like decorations and stuff the interior decors reception and all of that yeah. or i would say traditional wedding that cultural vibrancy you know display your cultural values and, and stuff yeah i prefer yeah. to try yeah Perfect. All right, so that concludes our Corona game for, for today. Um, wow. So uh, next question now. Um, so wait, in, in terms of, so let's get back on to talking about how you move into the UK. So okay. with you moving to the UK, so like okay. what will, in fact, because obviously I know there's going to be many other people that come to the UK. Yeah. So it's like from Nigeria. So what advice would you give them? um one 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 main advice i would say is this you know believe in yourself believe in yourself just believe you have what it takes to succeed out there because before any other person can believe in you you need to display or show that yes you have this full confidence in your ability yeah because you're definitely going to meet people who will tell you oh don't go you cannot do this you cannot do that if you have the resources, just believe in yourself that you can make it out there. You know, plan your career paths. What do you want to do? And be flexible with it. And uh, above all, just hold God tight. I would say, yeah. God, God will always guide your paths. He always provide. He always gives you that discernment to make the best, yeah. best decision. So that that's the advice I, I, I'll give. Like what we said earlier at the beginning of the podcast, you know, there yeah. will be challenge, there will be challenges. There will definitely yeah. be challenges. So, how do you want it? How do you really need it? It's going to test your commitment to pursuing that which you desire. So, yeah. you having that full confidence in yourself, believing in God, trust me, every other thing will be added, will be secondary to it. So that that's my advice. I like that. I like that. So, speaking of that, as what? So, um, yeah. what would you describe as some of your proudest achievements since moving? Well, my proudest achievement, I would say, uh, distinction in uh, in my masters. You know that that's nice. one very that's one very big. You know, I always had that big picture within me. You know, yeah. You having an idea of what you want, that big picture you, it gives you the courage to keep pushing. Yeah. So, achieving distinction in my masters and uh, getting my my dream job, I would say, you know, working within the healthcare sector, um, yeah. contributing to diagnosis and all of that as a genetic technologist, I would say, they are my two biggest achievements coming to the UK. But before I came here, I wanted to chase my career. I wanted to chase my goals, my dreams, and all of that. Yeah. And I can confidently say that by the grace of God, I have achieved that in my career line. Yeah. So it's okay. a very big achievement for me. And uh, I'll, I'll, I always want to use it as an opportunity to inspire people who are looking up to me. Yeah. See, I, since I, I moved here, I've achieved this. Definitely, you can. Yeah. You, you you can and uh you know then during my masters i was part of the master's society it was a group made up of international students and we motivated ourselves and uh, we we try as much as possible to um inspire everyone because we share beautiful stories from people and now I i'm i'm part of the story that will motivate people I believe you must have seen the blog uh, written by my school about me, uh, my journey so far, yeah. from masters and now in the NHS. So, you know, stories like that will definitely inspire people who want yeah. to be inspired, anyways. So, 
I would say it's a very big achievement for me. And I thank God for for how far I've come, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, so also on top of that, in fact, first of all, I must say congratulations as well, because obviously when you whenever you achieve anything, yeah. uh, I have to say congratulations because thank you. I so know much. how cha- I know how challenging challenging it is to even attempt to achieve something, but then to go on to achieve it, then achieve more. Do you know what I mean? It's just yeah. even just landing your dream job, it's like seriously, it's a major achievement. Um, so also, um, I have to also ask you this question as well, though, uh, okay. which I nearly forgot. That um, this, so with you moving to the UK, staying in the UK so far, like how have you managed to maintain your Igbo identity while in, integrating into British culture? Uh, okay, yeah, no. Evil identity will always be constant. It's never going to change. You know, coming to the UK, you're not having people you can speak your language with. So I always kept in touch with my friends back home. And uh, in Manchester, where I stayed before I, I moved to Cambridge, I joined the Igbo society, like an Igbo community. It's not really a community. Like it's an Igbo group, yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, when you join such groups, it gives you this uh, home feeling. People around you, they are speaking Igbo, the interaction and all forms of communication in Igbo. And uh, at the, the, the EWG festival in Manchester, above all, it's just not moving far away from the culture. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in a far away land, I'm far away from home. Well, I tried as much as possible to ensure I connect to the Igbo groups. Yeah attend Igbo festivals, attend Igbo cultural displays, interact with people who can guide you towards knowing what to do because I'm an Igbo man forever. So that's not going to change. Yeah. So moving to a new environment, I now have to embrace a new environment and not discard my identity, my Igbo identity. Yeah. So that, that, that's where the assimilation comes into play. You, you you need to uh, know how to integrate into a society without, um, should I say, without eliminating or completely deleting your identity or your tribe. So for me, I, when I see an Igbo person on the road, on the bus, anywhere, I try yeah. as much as possible to speak Igbo with them. Yeah. So even personally at home, I play Igbo songs in the background. That's no, good. That's good. I play good songs in the background, and that's speaking that of that I, as well. Speaking of playing Igbo songs in the background, what is your? If you were to, if you were to choose your top five songs, what would they be? My top five songs. I would have preferred if you said, "Okay, top five song." I know. There's this song by Umo Bilibo. It's titled uh. Uche. It's titled yeah. Uche. I know Uche has to do with, you know, with something like sense and how you reason things. And uh, this song is talking about he is advising how, uh, men, uh, boys and girls to have the mindset of going into marriage. It, it is. It goes beyond the love. The, the, the love. There should be serious commitment. There should be real reality check and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, Uche by Umo Bulibo. Then uh, I'm a fan of Umo Bulibo too. So there's this other, he said, Ije Muke is the title of the song. Yeah. You know, the lyrics is more like breaking down what men need to, um, the challenges men face. You know, Ije Muke. Yeah. They say, if Ije Muke is the easy stuff like that. So that's one. That's the second song. Then, there's this, you know, when it comes to a high life, okay, Osita, Osadebe, Chief Osita, Osadebe, Osadebe, most of his songs, I might not really know the exact title, but I play most of the tracks. Yeah. Most of the tracks. Then um, there's one guy I recently found out, uh, I think, Abalanze, Onyeka, OKK, you know. Yeah. I may not know the exact title of the songs, but for the artist, yeah. 
I I I just listen to to their songs because it helps me uh know how to un- listen properly when someone speak speaks evil and for people who are trying to learn how to speak and how to hear I always advise them play evil songs when you play evil songs your yeah. auditory, auditory functions are improved towards capturing those language terms and, and you'll be amazed at how you can even make attempts to to pronounce them so yeah it, it, it was so, so i don't know if i mentioned five or title I was trying of to count on my hands <laughs> but then i lost count <laughs> but no yeah i'm glad you actually mentioned that listening 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 to those it can help with pronunciation as well because i realized yeah i, I, I do remember it's, it's so interesting how with music in general, like you pick up on certain words and then when you, when you listen to it over and over, you, 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 especially, I don't explain it. It's like, it's like, for example, I can't remember what song it was, but I know there was one song where now I actually know certain words, but it's like, obviously for me, the language, I've got to learn more. So when yeah, I yeah. them do the the Ibo language school, I'm attending it again. I'm attending again. I have to attend okay. again. But, um, <laughs> so and if anyone else wants to attend Ibo language school from ICSN, yeah. make sure they they go to the link in the description box below and make, make sure you become a member and find out more information in regards to that. But um, also before we um, last two questions. Okay. Um, what are your plans for the future, both professionally and personally? Okay, I'll start with the first one, professionally. You know, there's always room for personal development uh, within your profession. You know, I'm in a particular level, I'm at a particular level where I know I can achieve more. Yeah. So I have to do as much as possible, get the necessary training, obscure and keep achieving as much as i can so the career ladder is there there are different faces different career paths within my field that i can go into so yeah. definitely I, I have plans to obscure get more qualifications hopefully make up my mind to go for my phd and and, and stuff then that's yeah. that for my professional. Then for my personal, um, you know, when it comes to personal plans, it's more like you improving yourself, being a better version of yourself. Yeah. So that that's how I see it. We we are not perfect. We have to acknowledge our imperfections. So improving in every area of your life, uh, personally, uh, your spiritual connection your mental connection how you relate with people you know those things make up our personal uh, attributes our characters you know so personally i want to be a better version of myself every day yeah. so the only competition is between myself what i am now what i was so it's not between me or, or any other person it's between me I and like myself that. so that that's how i I tend to approach it. Yeah. No, I like I like, I like the way you, you said that because it, it, it kind of makes sense when you when you're only in competition with yourself to improve yourself because it's like sometimes because so, like in life you just never know what someone else is going through. Even exactly. Though, like even though they may they may have the same career, they may even live in the same area as you. But you don't know exactly what they're going through or what they got, True. what they went for to get to that level. So True. there's, yeah. So it only makes sense to be in competition with yourself. Because I, I remember, it's so interesting. Like even, um, okay, uh, even though I know, how to explain it? It's like I remember at one point, I thought I would, I wanted to be in competition with these other people. Like even though yeah, they're older than me, and they didn't, in fact, they don't even know who I am. But I thought I was in competition with them. <laughs> and to find out years later, I'm realizing, hold up, they did this, did this, did this. Nah, 
I don't want that. Like, I'm only see, see, yeah. you, 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 you can you can actually look at people to learn how they approach certain things. Yeah. You 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 tend to learn from them because you need certain areas of your life to be improved. And there are people who have crossed that level. You need to look at them. Okay, this is what I need to learn. This is what I need to do. You can even approach them and ask questions. So yeah. you, you you shouldn't be approaching from the angle of I want to compete with this person. You you just burn out at the end. True. And once you see the person moving way ahead, you don't know the effort they've put into. That's you don't know true. you don't know what they've done. And uh, you you just end up killing yourself. But once you discover that, yeah, who I was years back, I'm way better now. It gives you that feeling of personal pride. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing well for myself. I'm doing well for myself. And I, th I believe that's what counts. You're doing well for yourself. You're improving personally uh, at your own pace without yeah. being forced. You're not trying to compare your life with others. You know, comparison steals joy. Yeah, that's, that's very true. Steals joy. So you need to focus on yourself, focus on what you want. You yeah. can only see what people want you to see. Yeah. You can only see. So you, 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 you'll, you'll, be, you'll be shocked when you even go closer to some people. You discover you're winning more than them, but you were just seeing what they wanted you to see. That's true. So above all, Focus on yourself and you'll be all right. That that's how I see it. True. That's very true. Yeah. So with, with that said, I wanna thank you for being part of this episode. Um yeah. also I do want to mention as well to yeah. everyone who else is who's watching uh, or listening, make sure you run up the likes on YouTube. I don't even know how it works on Spotify, but if you can like, like if you can comment, comment. But I know you can share on Spotify, so share. Get me one. We want we want to see the numbers rise. We want to see millions on this episode and the future episodes. I'm highly ambitious. So if we can get millions, let's get millions. But um, and also um, like I said, if you are living in Manchester or you are in London, then and you are able, then you might as well become part of ISSN. It only makes sense. But um, but yeah, other than that. Um, all I can say is now. See, this is why I don't want to put your saying this. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, because I like to end it out here, yeah, and I like to say "kachipo, kachipo, kachipo." That's good. Thanks for having me on your podcast. Thank you so much. Uh, I, no I really appreciate. Yeah, I think uh, we can. Are. We will definitely have, we'll do more of this. More of this. Definitely. It's, fun. it's, it's definitely. fun. Yeah, thank All you right. so much. Ibo <laughs> <laughs>